Okay, our learning target for today, practice reading fluency, so fluently, and analyze similes and metaphors in the text. So, you're going to do the class pick assignment. All of the instructions are included in there, okay? So I'm going to pull it up, that's fluency. Burn bag part three, there we go. Okay, so there are quite a few pages, but we don't need to do all of the pages because page seven, eight, and nine are in Spanish, okay? And then the first two are just reading and mostly highlighting. Okay, so at the top, similes. So we're going to focus on similes and metaphors for the first page. Okay, so a simile is when you compare two things using the word like or as, and then for that, so an example of a simile, he runs like the wind, like it literally has the word in the sentence, okay? He is as fast as the wind, so it has to have this or this word for it to be a simile, okay? Go. Go. You want him to go first? Okay. Thank you. Okay, so then a metaphor. A metaphor compares two things by saying that something is, was, were, am, or are something else. So it has to have one of these words. So life is a highway, or there were they were monsters. Okay. Okay. So to do as you read, we're going to highlight the broom dog's name. Two, part way through this text, the reader jumps ahead in time. Highlight the sentence that tells you. How long it's been since Mr. Munch gave Carton, sorry, gave Canton the broom dog. Part number three, highlight the sentence that tells you what Mr. Davindo's homework assignment was. Number four, highlight the sentence that tells you what an emotional support animal does. Okay, so for, those are the four parts that we need to highlight. At the end of the page, we'll go back and check that we did all four parts, okay? Yes, Sophie. Okay. okay. So now scroll down to start reading. So pages five through nine are just in Spanish. It's the same thing, just in Spanish, okay? So if you want to start reading on page five, Elian. Okay. Um, we're starting right here. The Broom Dog Part 3. I think that's where we're starting. No, because it starts in here. Okay, I'll just start reading. Oh, here, there's mist. It's just super tiny. I can't see it. <laughs> Let me zoom in. Mr. Here. Munch. Okay, right here. Ready? Miss it. Mr. Munch at the top. Did you find it, Mona? Mm -hmm. oh. Oh, okay. Turn here. Okay. Now, 
Now we're ready. Thank you for being so patient. Okay, Mr. Munch reached reached into a locker and pulled out the head of a broom, the sweeping part, what which he decorated detached from the broom stick. The straw was curled and mangled as if Mr. Munch had been cleaning the sidewalk for like 20 years with it. He had drawn big black circles on the on one side like eyes and an oval with a tic-tac-toe board on the middle of it, which Canton assumed was the map. At the top, the two pieces of cloth cut into ears and glued in place. It's a broom. I cleaned it, promise, and yeah, it's a broom until you do this. He petted the wiry twine as if it were fur, as if he were scratching behind the ear of a Yorkie in need of grooming. Why is the mouth like that? Is the broom dog angry? No, Mr. Munch turned the broom head toward him, shrugged. He's smiling. Oh! Canton squished up his bef befuddled face. So you really think it's this gonna help me? Can't hurt to try. A slick smirk crept into Mr. Munch's face. I mean, the worst that could happen is you decide to clean up the street. So either way, everybody wins. The next day after school, Canton, with the broom dog tucked under his arm, slowly walked up to the corner to watch his mother, to guard the crossing guard. He leaned against the, the stop sign at the corner, and whenever Miss Post had to step into the street, blow her whistle, raise her hand to stop traffic, whenever Canton's dress would be pop on inflated balloon, he would run his fingers through the broom dog's hair, Eventually, he named it Dusty. It's strange, the things that work. Let's pause right here. Good, we found a metaphor, right? Canton's, whenever Canton's chest would become an inflated balloon. Okay, can we highlight anything else from our parts up here? Part right, one, highlight the broom dog's name. Yep. Okay, what's his name? Wait, what's the name? Um, Dusty, right Dusty, here on right the bottom. Right here. Just Dusty? Okay. Yep, just Dusty. It's right under the part where it says metaphor, okay? So on the class kick assignment, it is right here. Okay, highlighting, ready? Dylan, come on, you need to be following along. Eventually, he named it Dusty. Dylan, you need to be following along so you don't get bored. Come on, highlight. Okay, 10. Can I use my mouse? Eight, seven, quickly go before our time's up. Okay, ready to move on? Okay, it's been, ready? It's been a year since Mr. Munch gave Canton the broom dog. A year since the first panic attack. A year and a week since the accident. And things have gotten better. Do we need to highlight anything there? Um, Highlight the sentence that tells you. Good, so how long has it been since Mr. Munch gave Canton the broom dog? A year. A year. Good job. Okay, so highlight. Oh. Um, it's been a year since Mr. Munch gave Canton the broom dog. Okay. Quickly, Dylan. 
That it? Give me a thumbs up, Dylan, and we've got it, please. No one mask above your nose, please. Thank you, Alejandro. Thank you. Thank you, Emma. Again, quickly. Thank you, Muna. Okay, let's keep going. The bell rings. Ready? The bell rings, and everyone gets up to leave Mr. Davinzo's class. Simeon stands at the door, giving everyone high fives like he always does. Up high, he says to Canton as he approaches. Canton slaps his hand. Don't forget tonight's homework. Write about place, about people, human environmental interaction. Mr. Davinzo shouted over the end of the day, clamor. Canton stops at his locker, reaches in to grab Dusty, then heads for the door. He passes Miss Walkley in the hallway, scolding Simeon and Kenzie, the blue ball in his hand. Outside, he walks past Candace Green, who he never had the courage to talk to because she was always with her friends. Stinky Greg and Cool Remy. He passed Mr. Johnson, moving the carpool line along. Had to get to the corner before the first cross. That was his thing. For a year and a week, and when Canton finally made it up to the crosswalk at Portal Avenue, there was his mother, Miss Post, strapping on her vest and pulling the whistle attached to a, a black lanyard over her head like it was some kind of prestigious medal. There's my sweet boy, she said, greeting him, arm winged. They hugged. How was school? It was okay. Homer? Mr. Davinzo wants us to record human environmental interaction. Okay, let's stop right there. Sophie? Carpool? Carpool is when there is one car that a lot of people are sharing to get to the same place. Does that make sense? So like one parent might pick up many children to drop them off at school, like from the neighborhood. I do carpool. People do it for work too. Okay, let's see if we can highlight anything else right now. Number three, highlighting, highlight the sentence that tells you what Mr. Davinzo's homework assignment was. What was the homework assignment? What was the homework assignment? Thank you, Emma. You're a lifesaver. Mr. Davinzo wants us to record human environmental interaction. Quickly, you have 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Five, good job, Sophie. Three, two, one. Thank you, Liam. You got it, Mona? It's the very last part. Okay. All right. Okay, let's keep going. Which is? Which is? Which is what I'm going to work on. Canton made a funny face at his mom, and she made one back. I'm not exactly sure what that means, but I feel like I'm probably an expert at it. Canton chuckled. I'll let you know if I need your assistance. Deal. Well, get to it, Miss Postley. Canton pulled a notebook from his backpack, along with Dusty the broom dog. Then set the bag down against the stop sign so he could sit and have a little cushion. The broom dog rested on his lap as he scribbled words and phrases. Latimer Middle School, Corner, Portal Avenue, Cars, Classmates, Mom, Whistle, People Stop, People Go, People Talk, People Hug, 
people frown, people laugh, people go up, people go on. Okay, go to page two on class pick assignment. Oh, wait, let's go back. Did we highlight everything we needed to? Highlight the sentence that tells you what an emotional support animal does. Ayana. It's in the yellow box, text box right here, right? What is an emotional support animal? An emotional support animal provides comfort to a human. Highlight. Helping to ease stress, depression, or anxiety. Some airports use support animals to soothe frenzied travelers. Some hospitals bring in support animals to comfort patients. Okay, so you should have highlighted an emotional support animal provides comfort to a human. Quickly, 10 seconds, and then we go on to page two. Nine, you got it? Eight, Elian, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and you got it? Okay, so on class pick assignment, now you should be on page two. To do, as you read, highlight what Canton's mother thinks the old groom dog looks like. Okay? Starting at the top, Canton, ready? Canton glanced up as everyone congregated at the corner like water building animals, again, like water building against a dam. Allowed to flow every few minutes. What did I so miss? Not right now. We're on this page. Page three. At the I bottom. need help highlighting Okay. People turning and crossing, waiting and talking, the web of conversations. Gregory Pitts, like Sandra White, Satchmo Jenkins. Feared he might be eaten by a dog on his way home. Cynthia Sauer was putting on a show at 3.33 p.m. Some banter on boogers. And everyone wanted to know what secret things Fatima Moss was always writing. He watched his classmates tap dance with tongues, challenging one another, sipping and sliding from story to story. Watched his mother perform a kind of ballet, how she spun, stepped into, like she was made of more, blew her whistle. So she went on the street. Blew her whistle, put a hand up for a bus to stop, put a hand out to wave the walkers through. Am I missing a paper? No. When all the Latimer students had walked off, headed home, or wherever they went after school, Miss Post removed her vest. She slung it over her shoulder. Pulled the whistle over her head. Another day, job done. Ready to walk? She asked Canton, who had been working nonstop on his assignment. He nodded. Yeah. Canton stood, the broom dog failing, falling from his lap like he had forgotten it was there. Miss Post picked it up. Sheesh, this thing has seen better days. She examined it, the mangled straw. The pieces of felt that were meant to be years long gone. I know it's supposed to be a dog, but now it kind of looks like a bus. She handed it to Canton. The eyes are like the headlights, and the mean mouth? It's smile. It's a smile, Canton corrected. Oh, right. The smile is the grill. Funny. 
Canton had never noticed that the broom dog had just become a thing he had. A thing he knew was there if he needed it. But it had been a long time. He realized since he actually needed it. It's all faded now, anyway, Canton said, grabbing his backpack. They stood on the corner, looked both ways before crossing. Still want it? His mother asked. Canton shrugged, tossed it up in the air. Caught it, tossed it again. Caught it, again. And loose straw separated from the bunch, again. And more loose straw falling down on them. And more? Miss Post laughed. Look at that. A school bus crawling from the sky. Canton smiled. Knowing a school bus is many things. So is a walk home. Okay, let's we'll stop right here. Highlight. What Canton's mother thinks the old broom dog looks like. Sophie. Um, where are the, the eyes of my headlight? Like and it's four. And kind of looks like a bus. I don't see it. We're on page four. Mm -hmm. But I don't see it. I know. Um, Hold on. Sophie, sorry, what was that? I know it, it's what she said. She said, I know it's supposed to be a dog, but now it looks like kind of like a bus. Now it looks kind of like a bus. Good. So it is. Okay, right here. We're on page four. Right by where it says simile. Okay, so let's highlight. I know it's supposed to be a dog, but now it kind of looks like a bus. Okay, highlight. Click Lillian. Where's Kent, uh, everybody congratulated at the corner, like, water blown, I guess, I guess. Okay. This one? Yeah. On here? Yeah. It is on... It's on page three on ours. Not yet, so... Yes, it is. Not right now. Okay. Page three, ready? So to do, type your answers to the questions below. Read the following paragraph from the story. Um, we're answering some questions. Okay, read the following paragraph from the story. So start reading it, please. Sophie, I already said not enough. So you need to be patient. I will remember. I will tell you when it is time. If you keep asking me and you're not being patient, then I will not let you. Okay. Ready, Dylan? Okay, I need your head up. Oh, head up. Thank you. Okay, read the following paragraph from the story. The next day after school, Canton, with the broom dog tucked under his arm, slowly walked up to the corner to watch his mother, to guard the crossing guard. And whenever Miss Post had to step into the street, blow her whistle, raise her hand to stop traffic, Whenever Canton's chest would become an inflated balloon, he would run his fingers through the broom dog's head. Eventually, he named it Dusty. It's strange, the things that work. Okay, so question A. Based on the evidence in the paragraph above, would you infer, make a reasonable guess, that the broom dog does or does not help Canton?
So what do you think? Sorry, I'm not going to go here. Do you think the book job does or does not help him to stay calm and less anxious? Does. Does not. That is a wrong word. Does. It does. It does. I would say it does too. So I would infer, start writing, start typing, that the broom dog, cookie coffee, does help Kent. Yes. Yes. Thank you, thank you. Okay, part B. Highlight the evidence in the paragraph above that proves your inference is correct. Okay, so I'm going to scroll down just a little. Well, that and scroll down a little bit. Okay, so what should we highlight that we know works for him, that it is helping him? What does he say? Sophie, did you write it down? Okay. Emma? Oh, sorry. So he says, it's strange, the things that work. So he's saying that it does work, but it, it's working. Okay, quickly, 10, 9, 7, and again, 8, 7, supposed to have like 2, 6, 5, Ready? I'm scrolling down. Three, two, one. Okay. Question number two. Read the end of the story. Chanting. For B. You are highlighting on the top. So you for B it says highlight the evidence. So we highlighted this. Read the end of the story. Canton smiled, knowing a school bus is many things. So is a walk home. So what is something a walk home could be? Write a metaphor describing what a walk home could be. Start your sentence with the words, a walk home is dot, dot, dot. So, for example, a walk home is a cool down after a long race. A walk home is, so what do you think? What is a walk home like to you, Sophie? An adventure. An adventure. That's an example, okay? You don't have to put on adventure, but you do need to put what fun. is fun, okay? A walk home is fun. Dylan, start typing. Again. Use both of your hands, Dylan, for properly typing. Thank you. Okay, got it? Oh. Okay, quick tell you. Okay, then go on to page two. Sophie, flip over to the next page. Start reading the next question. Okay, quick page. Ten, nine, you got it? Eight, oh. seven, again. Use both of your hands, it's faster. Okay, next page. Read each example of figurative language from the story. Type simile or a metaphor and in each in each box and highlight the two things that the author is comparing. 
Okay. Thomas will print it out later. Okay, put your phone book down. Thank you. Okay, so you're going to write if it's a simile or if it's a metaphor. And I have these up right here. Well, I have these right here, so I'll put them So a simile has the words like or as. A metaphor compares things using is, am, are, was, or were. Okay? So number one. Whenever Canton's chest would become an inflated balloon, he would run his fingers through the broom dot's hair. So A, is this a simile or a metaphor? Canton's chest would become an inflated balloon. Is it using the word like or as? Like. Canton's chest would become an inflated balloon. No. It is a metaphor because it's not using like or as, so it's not a simile. So metaphor right here. Thank you, Dylan. Eliana, come on. Okay, so what two things is it compared? Canton's what? Of an inflatable balloon. This is the sentence, Dylan. Canton's chest. Canton's chest. Good. Those are the two things that you should highlight it or underline. Okay. Now let's do number two. Ready? Canton glanced up as everyone congregated, gathered, at the corner like water building against a dam. Allowed to flow every few minutes. Is this a simile or a metaphor? Sim simile. Does it have the word like or as? Like. Like, right? So it is a simile, okay? Simile. Yes, it is. Huh? Congregated? What about it? No, no, no. Te parece un qué? Okay, I just can't, I can't tell you it, yeah. Okay, so what two things are being compared? What do we need to underline? Congregated? No, there's two things. being compared to water against a dam. Okay, underline quickly. Yeah. So you got it? Okay. Three more, ready? The eyes are like the headlights. Okay, simile or metaphor? The eyes are like the headlights. Ledger? No. Like. Simile or metaphor? Simile. Simile. It has the word like. It has to have like or ask. So, simile, what two things are being compared? Eyes and headlights. Eyes and headlights. Good. Okay, quickly. Put the marker away. Number three.
Okay, number four. I know it's supposed to be a dog, but now it looks like a bus. Simile. Simile. Get started on Lexia. We need to do three to four units today, okay?